Hi, it's me. Guys, I'm ready, I'm ready. Right here, right here, it's right here. Don't worry about it. T, from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet. Hey, look, um, I'll get something to drink. Just a little bit of water. I'm drinking water all morning. I'll get something else here. Uh, nah, I won't do it. Oh, here's what I do. Some juice. Juice, 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 juice. This is that uh, organic uh, carrot turmeric juice blend. You know, well, excellent source of antioxidant vitamin A as beta carotene. Not from concentrate. That's what we like. Not from concentrate. If you can look at when you read your stuff, if it says not from concentrate, get it. If it says from concentrate, all it means is they, they got it from someplace and then they put sugar in. Well, they, they, they froze it with sugar water. Somehow sugar's in there. So I put all this stuff in here. I should drink out the rest of the bottle. Let's just think. Hey, listen, I'm going to do something different today. Look, well, different. Interesting. Well, interesting to me. Here's the deal. As you know, when people get on these platforms, like this kind of platform, you know, talking to people, they want to be perfect. Da 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 da. Me, not so much. <laughs> As you may or may know, if you're listening to this, I don't have a lot of subscribers, nor do I want a lot of subscribers, right? Um, because a number of reasons, but this is for archival purposes only. But here's the thing. Let me show you what I mean, because this is why I don't want no, I to say that. Right? This is why things do happen the way it is. Uh, here. For instance, this, 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 well, this is what my, my brain thinks. It's National Poetry Month. You know, that's what April is. April is... Is it March, April? April. I think April is National Poetry National Poetry Month for United States and North America. Okay. I started out as a, I started out as a little kitty. But you know, somewhere in in, in, in my creative thing, did I really start? I said poetry a little bit later. I sort of actually theater creatively, creatively. You know. Anyway, the point is, some point I did, I did poetry. Started actually I did start doing poetry in 1971. Okay. So I've been poetry a long time. Interesting enough, I came across this poem that was also written in 1971. Well, he claims it's a poem, but we'll talk about that in just a second. And so what I figured out, this is National Poetry Month. And, you know, this is where, you know, poets, they're, they're showing their, how they do stuff, you know what I mean? Whatever it is. I think he's supposed to, but then you do your, your finished product. Well, and then there's all kinds of things, like, for instance, I don't get writer's block, for instance. I never have writer's block. Why? I don't know. <laughs> well, I do not. There, but there are several things, for instance, I'm just talking to people, poets, that, one, that they do get writer's block. There's a lot of ways to, to deal with stuff, right? Now, one of the things that I do is I might take a, a poet that inspires me, like, like say, like say, Henry Dumas. You know what I mean? I read one of his poems, but I, I leave it in the background. Then I might write a poem, right? Or, you know, just because I'm saying that that inspired me, but I, I get into poetry mood by reading other poets. In fact, if I do poetry readings, what I try to do if, it, if it's long enough, you know what I mean? Well, so what I try to do is I always read a poet, a, another poet, some other poet that I respect and love. You know, like I might pull out a, a, a Sophia Hendricks Holmes poem, you know what I mean? Or something like that. I pick a poem, you know, and then and then I go with my, whatever I'm going to read, right? Well, here, I read across this poem, and I'm, I'm, I, he calls it a poem. I don't, I'm not so sure. Uh, but people have ideas about poetry, right? What it is, it's got a rhyme schemes, all kinds of things. You know, the great thing about the um, the Black Arts Movement is that definitely, I mean, if no other movement has just crushed, you know, um, they just really it redefined poetry. The Black Arts Movement did. Um, there's another, there's another thing. There's a thing called uh, Quinsaba by. Uh, um, I just talked to Eugene the other day. Uh, Eugene B. Redmond out of the Eugene B. Redmond's Writers um, uh, Club. There in East St. Louis, um, Illinois. <laughs> this is Illinois. Uh, <coughs> uh, anyway, uh, 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 so he has to call it Quinsaba. It's like a 49 uh, word poem, you know, seven lines of seven letters each, uh, seven um, uh, words each. Anyway, uh, no, uh, um, and then each word has to be less than seven letters unless it's a proper noun. Uh, anyway, so like if I, if I sometimes I, I work on uh, on my uh, quinsaba, you know I just I just just do that, or sometimes like um, I have a poem and I'll answer a poem. Well, the best way I can put this is um, John Lennon 
and I think it's the White Album. Uh, the, John Lennon wrote this a, a song. Uh, uh, well, wrote this ditty, whatever you want to call it, called Revolution Nine. Revolution number nine, revolution number nine, something like that. Anyway, Nina Simone answered that poem by, it's going to be a revolution. Well, all right. She did a song. When I was uh, in uh, 1969, no, 68, 69, uh, I was uh, at the Summer Academy for the New York City Mission Society Cadet Corps, 1969, I guess it was. I had a little, I had a platoon, and had a group of, a group of, I had a platoon of kids, you know, because the core, you know, you you learn uh, you learn all like the Boy Scouts, but a little bit more advanced. You know what I mean? You get, we got, you know, we had, we had drill. You know, we, we in fact, it was interesting. They had to get rid of the cadet corps for sure, because you, if you if you see all these black people, then they're twirling rifles, spinning, but, but we also the officers we had sabers. <laughs> We had sabers. Can you imagine black people this day and age walk down the street in formation, in military discipline, with, with you know, with, with you know, with, 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 with plume hats and and, and with, with, with you know, cross belts, you know, and sabers and and, and, and rifles and whatever, it, you know, the, 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 the society would they would blow their mind. I say all this because this this is uh, I, I I'm I'm making this long because I feel like it. Uh, uh, because around about that time in the 70s, right, uh, stuff was happening. Um, now, Richard Pryor had sort of, I want to say dropped out, but yeah, he dropped out. This is right before, uh, well, he dropped out, Richard Pryor. He was up there in the in the Bay Area, right? And uh, one of these, the Bay Area, I'm associated with the uh, Pacifica Network of radio stations. Um, but in the Bay Area, there's five radio stations in the Pacific ne ne Network, which is probably not going to let, well, I'm going to say, I won't put anything out there. Uh, but the the, uh, the the first station was KPFA in uh, in uh, Berkeley, uh, and and so um, and, and, and what happens with our with, with Pacifica is uh, it's it's what's called a commercial free you know really commercial free no it's, it's listener sponsored completely, but what because of that so freedom then anybody can come on like one time. I mean, I used to hang out with Pepsi Charles, and her, um, and she and she was when she was hanging with um, with Chaka Khan. You know, Chaka Khan would do a guest DJ job, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, um, 1971, uh, Richard Pry was up there in in the, in the Bay Area, and at the same time, around about I guess it's August of that year, uh, somewhere around there, uh, the Attica riots, the Attica rebellions happened. Uh, and so he, it was like about two, I think and I saw this, um, I got this from uh, Real Black. Real Black is a really good um, a channel. I want to, I'll put the description in there. Maybe I'll put, I'll try to put the, the link that has this particular section that I'm talking about, where Richard Pryor did, basically did a, a program uh, in, in response to the Attica situation. And in this program, uh, he he said he wrote a poem because he was a he says he's a he's a comedian he wrote a poem. Um, this is the poem. Okay, just just a, just a second. So I got poem. Yeah, here's the here's the poem. I call it prior poem because he doesn't have a name for it. I call it prior poem, and it's written delivered about the autumn of 1971. Right, and here's how it goes. It will I I wrote it out this way. Murder the dogs, the mad frothing at the mouth of dogs with expensive cat teeth and fat bellies full of babies starving. No, don't wait until they die. Kill them now. Because if you let them live and die a natural death, you'll be bitten and left to die in agony. And a mad dog pack will then sniff out and search for your children to eat, eat whole flesh, bones, and soul. These beasts will then retort the ones they have not eaten. And their schools of unlearning, they will teach you, they will teach their children the hunting and capture their own to bring to them to devour. The dog, the mad dog, will end up patting you on the head and throwing you a bone. Okay, that's that's what that's what Richard wrote, okay? This opinions, whatever, it's not it's, it's not it's not well, well we won't we won't say anything about it. Okay, that's that's what it is, right? Now I wrote. Now remember, I'm just working on this now, right? So I wrote a poem that was inspired what Richard what Richard did. Now it's not complete. That's I'm re, I'm basically I took his poem, thought about it, 
fucked up about a whole bunch of things. Everything since 1971. And I came up, I'm starting this particular poem, okay? It's not finished. In fact, this is like, a, at first I write it out, I write it out long, long hair, in a book or something like that. Then I usually type it out. And when I'm typing it and transposing it, it's so, sort of like another edit. And then I got to look at it, and then I got to think about it, blah, blah, blah. And then I may do another edit. Then I might do another version. Anyway, I'm up, it's like, I'm at level three right now, right? And this is what has come so far. And I'll tell, well, let me just read it. I'll just read it straight first, Now I'll explain something to you, right? Banish the inhumans, those frothing at the mouth with expensive cap teeth of stolen African mirror, minerals. Sorry about that. Let me start all over again. One thing about the rappers, you got to have flow. Here we go. Banish the inhumans. I should say this. Inhumans, it's, I don't think you all can see this. Let's see. I don't think you can see this. I have to show this to you. See the way inhumans is done? Is a lowercase i and then uppercase h then lowercase u-m-a-n-s, right? I do that a lot. There's, there's certain signature things that I that I do with my thing. That's one of the things. So let, let me do the poem now. See, it's only one, two, three, four. Right now, four stanzas. Now, first, uh, the first two stanzas are five lines each. The second two stanzas are... F one, two, three. Oh. The first two stanzas are five lines. The third stanza is... is four lines. The... Uh, the fourth stanza is five. No, it's four lines also. Okay. This means something to me. Numbers always mean something to me. Let me read the thing. Here we go. Banish the inhumans, those frothing at the mouth with its. With, banish the inhumans, those frothing at the mouth with expensive cap teeth of stolen African minerals. Humans. Fat belly full of baby starving inhumans. Manage them now, because if you let inhumans live and die a natural death, you'll be eaten. You'll be left to die in agony. Packs of inhumans will search out, sniff out your children to eat flesh, bones, and whole souls. Those inhumans will retard their schools of learning. Sorry, those inhumans will be taught their schools of unlearning, training you to teach their children the hunting and capturing, bringing them to a devouring at the paws of these inhumans. Okay, so that's all jumbled up. You see how this, so I got I got to keep on working on it. this is natural poetry. This is national poetry, and the, the work of a poet is not just you just don't write stuff down and then you know. Go, I mean, Richard should have known better than what he did because you know it wasn't a poem. Because usually with comedians, hey, you write stuff down and then you go over and you keep on refining it. You know what I mean? So he obviously just did it one time. He didn't refine it, but now I've got to work because this does. I gotta you know. There's certain things like for instance, he he did the whole mad dog thing, whatever have you. I've since the '60s or even before the '60s. I don't call people, I try not to call people names. You know, you know what I mean? Like, for instance, famous thing in the 60s, where we used to call the, the, the cops pigs, you know what I mean? And then one to, at one demonstration, I, I actually heard this, a cop was beating on somebody, and he said, now, yeah, I'm a pig, here's what a pig does. Boom, 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 boom. So, so, so calling people names don't really do stuff, you know what I mean? So I try not to do it. So when he says, for instance, mad dog, right? Uh, um, well, I should say, calling names that, that that will, how do you say, set people off, or whatever it is, then that's that's sort of different, you know what I mean? But in humans, it's calling them a name, but it's, it's I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a, um, a thing. So anyway, but when they say mad dog, I didn't, I didn't, mad dog, you know, rabbit dog, I got the imagery, it's perfect imagery, poetic imagery, whatever have you, but I like in humans better. So I just, I just, every place had dogs or whatever, I just put in humans. There's a whole lot of other things that, that Richard did uh, that I, that, so there's some things that he did that I, that I pulled out, like, like devour is the kind of word I like. This word, retard, there's no such word as retard as I know. I should look it up. But I guess there's no such word as retard. Fine, let me look up and see if there's such a word as retard, because I don't remember any word. Uh, R-E-T- a R T. 
retort. No such a word, Richard. Oh, wait a second, retort. Urban, urban Dictionary. Let's see what they say. Retort for the... <laughs> let me not read that. That's, that's sort of... Let me censor that because I don't curse. You know what I mean? Not to. Well, the, the first thing I get... July 3rd is when I could curse. And also, you know, like December 31st, January 1st, two, two times out of the year. From a definition, a call, a retort. Is that the word that I used? I used the word retort? Yeah, I guess I did. Oh, let me retort. Yeah, that's right. Uh, a clever remark, especially a comeback line uh, to an insult. Okay, so it's not retort, it's retort. Retort is, oh, to think of something clever. Oh, okay. So how did I use it? Hey, hey, this is getting interesting. Let me... Let me look. Let me look at something here. Just a second. Come on, get back up here. Man, I don't. I'm, I'm not really good with. Uh, I'm not really good with laptops. I'm not really into this. Laptops. Uh, let me see how Richard uses it. Dave, I thought there was no such word as we taught. Here I am, English literature, and I'm supposed to know these things. But hey, Richard was right. Which is right a lot, you know. Uh, it says eat more. Hold on, blah, 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 blah. Oh, well then retort the ones they have not eaten. Uh, it doesn't fit to what he says as far as the Urban Dictionary goes. I should look at some other meanings. Maybe I'll look at the other meanings later. No, maybe I'll look it up now. I see. So I put down da 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 because uh, I I found the word fascinating, so I started to use it. Um, um where's that? Fix your mouth, expensive, stolen, da, 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 fuba, banish them now because if you let the immunes do, they would, da, 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 packs of, in, of inhumans, packs, man. Here's the other thing. White people, I noticed, they do things in packs. You know, that one and two, they, they, they do things in packs. When they get all violent and stuff like that, they have to have a, a group a group around them. You know what I mean? And, you know, that packs, and it's just, you know, uh, immunes will start, will we'll then, these immunes will then retard they are schools of unlearning. Clever things? It's not the right word. I'm going to leave it there. I'm just fast. See, these are the things I got to work on. <laughs> I'm going to do it, but I got to work on it. So anyway, let me stop there because I've been talking a long, long time. So anyway, so there's a poem, National Poetry Month. Hey, it's National Poetry Month. Write a poem. That's what I say. You know, just, just do it. It's just a suggestion, you know, from from me, T from the Patterson Ticket to change it to bed. <laughs> at an undisclosed location during National Poetry Month. <laughs>